the ancients of the Near East really were well acquainted with the movement of the stars. But if the ancients were so good at using the heavenly bodies to track time, then what did they think of the biblical concept of creation? How could they possibly believe that the entire universe and everything in our planet was created in just six days like it says in the Bible? Wouldn't Genesis sound like some elaborate children's story? Today, scientists believe that the universe was formed not in six days, but over the course of billions of years. But it turns out that modern science and the Bible may both be right. And I found an astrophysicist who believes he can explain why. In the Bible, God says, let there be light, and wham, there is light. God then creates the entire universe, including our own planet, in only six days. Throughout history, science has insisted that the universe is eternal and that the Bible's explanation is nothing more than myth. But recently, a theory has emerged that the universe did have a beginning. It started off with a big bang. But according to that theory, it took billions of years to create the universe, not six days. So I'm on my way to Jerry Schroeder. He's an astrophysicist who believes that modern science and the book of Genesis don't contradict each other. Well, let's talk about the Big Bang. Most people think there's a basic conflict between the Bible's idea of the origin of the universe and modern science. I should put it this way, in simple words, the discovery of the Big Bang is the best news for God since Moses came down from Sinai. Nothing can match it. There was a creation to the world. The Big Bang says there's a creation. Most people say, yeah, but um, that beginning is uh, it's not it's not a it's not a six day creation it's it's uh, billions of years we're not talking days we're talking eons. Ah, ah, so for, well, there's two problems here. First, the creation of the universe we, we solve that problem. So is it billions of years or is it uh, numbers of days? From the creation of the universe to the creation of the soul of Adam on day six, the universe has to advance from a, bo a burst of energy to the existence that we know, the modern, modern man. All I need to know is how time dilation would work from this moment when matter forms till today or atom or any time that you want in the modern world. And we know that number. We know the ratio of this dilation of time. It's not, it's not gravity and it's not velocity. It's the stretching of space. The original space stretch, it almost like rubber. And that affects the perception of time when seen at a distance. Physicists around the world agree that the Big Bang created our universe. And as it expanded, it stretched by a factor of a trillion. As space stretches, it also distorts time. And that's why from Earth, the universe appears to be approximately 15 billion years old. But if you were to observe the universe from its point of origin, it would appear much, much younger. Jerry Schroeder has come up with a formula that he believes reflects the age of the universe from the perspective of the origin of the Big Bang. He took the 15 billion years that science estimates to be the age of the universe and divided it by the stretching factor. He came up with the number 0 0.015. Converted into days just happens to equal six days. The fact is the universe is six days old from this perception and billions of years from this perception, provided you take the view from the beginning looking forward. Those six 24-hour days do indeed contain all the ages, the billions of years. So you're saying there's God's clock? The Bible's and, clock. Okay, let me The Bible's okay, clock. All right, so you're saying there's the Bible's clock? For the six days of Genesis. And there's kind of human, the human clock. Yes. And the first days until man is created is, it, is a kind of a... Perception of time from the beginning looking forward. Do you think the ancients somehow intuitively understood that when they looked up at the heavens? I think we all understand it. It sounds strange, but we have a cosmic memory. And the ancients, being closer to nature, could in fact look at the stars and, and feel it. They saw that they were part of this big system. There wasn't this tremendous separation that we have today. Time is pliable. Understanding it is a matter of perspective. There's creation from the biblical perspective and creation from our own somewhat shrunken point of view. There may be knowledge in the Bible that is ahead, not behind, science's current understanding of the cosmos.